And we're back with uh, Doctor Who number nine. Yeah. Doctor um, number nine. We are finished the with movie the whole... Yeah, the movie Doctor We're finished with the, the entire uh, complete series of uh, Doctor Who's. Yes. And we're doing uh, Doctor Who number nine, which, uh, well, after the series ended, they were going to uh, try to bring it back many, many times. And even with uh, Tom Baker coming on the board as saying, would it help if I came back to uh, play the Doctor again? <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, didn't and the ser- that, w- that didn't happen because... At the, around that time, uh, Steven Spielberg had said in passing that he was interested in the Doctor Who series. So uh, BBC latched onto that for years, hoping that Spielberg was going to make a Doctor Who movie. That would have sucked. Yeah, and, uh, uh, awful. But what came next? Well, also if you get a Spielberg, yeah. A George Lucas one. <sighs> Fox. Let's have Fox TV do it. Oh, good. Yay, Fox. Yay. Fox did it. TV, we were doing a bunch of science fiction and uh, genre pilots at the time, stuff like uh, Generation X and uh, David Hasselhoff as uh, as Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, God, yeah. And there's this winner, Doctor Who. Uh, it was be an Americanized version of Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. There'd be many differences, but it would be a continuation of the original series, and uh, Sylvester McCoy would be in it. <laughs> so Coming back with the most yeah. violent of... <laughs> deaths in generations of all time. Okay, this is insane. Uh, Doctor Who, uh, played by Sylvester McCoy, the Doctor basically, he is taking the Master's ashes, because the Master has come somehow come back, and in a somehow uh, double-crossed the Daleks, <clears throat> and was assassinated by them. At some point so, before something. the movie, yeah. he double-crossed them, and then he was executed on Scarrow. But we have a great uh, re-envisioning of the TARDIS, which i got to say I did like. Oh, the cool Victorian TARDIS? The Victorian TARDIS was pretty cool. The it only... Looks... Oh, sorry, I forgot. We saw it recently. The first time we see uh, his library? Yeah, exactly. And it's pretty cool. We, we get to see the Doctor sitting down in a chair reading the book. <clears throat> and uh, in probably the one of the most inane ways to have the Doctor uh, uh, have to be regenerated, uh, there's a uh, actor... That's a, a young man who's being chased by a gang. And so Doctor Who's TARDIS comes down. And he comes out of the TARDIS and gets involved in gang violence. And is shot by a, a gang when he comes out of the TARDIS. Just think of this for a second. Imagine how that would fly nowadays. What if come the like Christmas episode, Matt Smith walks out of the TARDIS mm-hmm. in a wintry place. And he just trips up. And he smacks his head. He's dead. It's dead. Like, literally, so some McCoy just walks out of the TARDIS, and they're like, oh, and they start shooting him, essentially. So, it's not... No, basically, yeah. It's basically... It's, there's no setup. There's just, oh, <clears throat> dead. So then he goes to the... Now, another thing that was bad is that, basically... He dies. There's no real explanation of, uh, of it, and people that have not seen Doctor Who before... Uh, and oh, they're yeah. trying to go not. to a new audience probably didn't understand it. That is why they didn't show the regeneration of Chris Eccleston. Yeah, what a... And just have basically have him look in a mirror. What a good way to like Seriously. introduce to people that this guy can regenerate. But he steps out of his police phone box, which we barely explained already at all. He's shot. Uh, there we go. For anyone who hasn't seen it, it's a few minutes into the film. Yeah, the minutes. opening narration says, The Master, who they wouldn't know, Actually, was taking a scar up. What? We don't even know that a lot about the... The, the whole Daleks and stuff like that, it's really it, glossed just, over. Really. Yeah, they look, so anyone who doesn't know this, the Master, who they don't know, was brought to Scarrow, a place they don't know, and killed by the Daleks. More people they don't know. Anyway. It's bringing his ashes away, and then suddenly our main character walks out and gets killed. So, I don't know why that's a ball demon, but I guess we're going to think about that That's way. true, but like... But it was a horrible only, death. Anyway, so he's brought to a hospital where Daphne Ashbrook who plays the doctor is uh, basically a, she loses him on the operating table. That's right, because he officially dies in this one his and then heart, regenerates for some reason. His heart is like, his heart stops. But what she does not know is that he's not really dead because, you know, a doctor has two hearts. That's true. <clears throat> so he goes in one of the uh, most oddest regenerations of all. We yeah. watch him contort his face until it's superimposed but the other guy's face is... Yeah... Uh, yeah, it's, a re- a morgue, it's pretty yeah. sad, actually, in the hospital morgue, yeah. yeah and so morgue. basically, we get a uh, Paul McGann then, 
who takes over. Was, I gotta say, I, I do like Pong nice. Yeah, you know, he, he he's, kinda reminds me of the the newer series doctors. He's like he talks faster, he's more chipper. Just he doesn't He's very Victorian and uh we see him come back and basically there's some different things here that are actually kinda cool. But now let's talk about one thing that's not very cool. The Master. Oh yeah. The Master has been played by Roger Delgado, Jeffrey Beavers, John Sims. John was well, we're talking about this well, at this point. Uh, Anthony Anley. Uh there were many great, great masters. This is not one of them. Instead, the master is oh, not regenerated into his own body. In actuality, an ambulance attendant, played by Eric Roberts. American Eric Roberts, uh, yeah, that's Julia Roberts' brother, is taken over by the master. And he basically does what he did with in uh, Keeper of Tracking. And I'm sure lots of people at the office in Keeper Track, and he regenerates into a, into Eric Roberts' body, basically. Yeah. And uh, he chews up the scenery in a very bad way. Eric Roberts makes a horrible master. Uh, he just doesn't suit the role. Uh, it, masters, it just goes to tell you that the master should never be played by an American actor. Just no, just never. Yes. Uh, Palm again doesn't press. His outfit that he wears is good. It's very Victorian. He is the TARDIS. It suits the TARDIS. Uh, ironically, oh, at the end, the uh, girl that he... This this is the first time we see romantic uh, overtures in Doctor Who, and, and it didn't fly very well at the time. And the girl decides not to go with him. She um, says no to uh, going in the TARDIS. If I remember correctly, doesn't she? I think so, yeah. Uh, anyway. I think she... At the, the I may be in correct that might actually this might actually happen in the uh, audios or the books that afterwards i think she says no but the master's apprentice slash companion says yes the asian guy i don't know that might be in the um, i'm not sure if it might be in the audio because i know sure. like there's it, there was an expanded audio been a while. of this by the way this is definitely worth picking up if you get the visit set it's a uh, then you probably got this uh and by the way why is this worth picking up? Is this a really great movie to watch? No, it's really, really not. Great features. Mm, great features, again. This is a, a two to set. And as you see, this one actually has an again picture, like, unlike the other ones have. Although it's the same picture, one in blue and one in red. At least it's got art, I suppose. At least it's got art. Uh, it has a little uh, booklet on it. And, uh... Yeah, are one of those discs half-human? Yeah, well, I guess we ought to talk to that as well. He changed the Doctor's origin a bit, and the Doctor, Doctor Who now, it is mentioned that the Doctor is half-human. Which doesn't make any sense. It had not been mentioned before. Hasn't uh, been mentioned since, really. It's, I think his mother was human or something like that. It, they mentioned the two hearts, they mentioned him being human. And uh, it, has, it's, it was kind of dropped after the, uh, the movie. Uh, it hasn't been mentioned in the series, and I don't think it's been mentioned in any of the audios either. No, uh, I don't really think so. No. Or even any of the uh, the uh, comic strips or anything like that. Uh, Paul McGann's Doctor did have some decent comic strips, uh, and uh, the audios are uh, an acquired taste. Paul McGann, it's not my favorite in the audios, but uh, people tend to uh, like some of the audios that he does. Uh, yeah, I find them more a little bit too refined as the uh, doctor for me, but that's uh, that's me personally. His stories he's doesn't like really, this much. He like with all the other doctors, they have this really distinct voice, and it's like when you hear Sylvester McCoy, it's always like the rolled sounds and stuff, and Colin's got like the loud, boomy voice, and even Dave, freaking Davison is like very like and like held back and refined. But with him again, it's always like, huh, what shall I do today? I'm the doctor, you know. Let me read my books about doctor things. It's really, like, light and weird so, sounding. It's like... Did he not have Mary Shelley? That's what it was. This. Yeah. I like that. I that is, that's that. cool. That is cool, mind you. He is... I know that recently, I don't know if it's over yet, but I know he's recently doing a bunch of darker... Big Finish Audios, based around the transition from him into uh, Eccleston. into Eccleston, which I guess doesn't matter anymore because of the John Hurt thing. 
but uh, well, but like based around the time war and stuff like that. I think that it is unfair that uh, he hasn't been asked back for the uh, 15th anniversary. Yeah. I think, come on, let's give the guy... You, I mean, you him at him. least. He's still... If, even if they're going to be like, oh, let's forget about all this past stuff, he is one of the newer doctors. He even has that type of like softer sounding bloody... He is a cool doctor. Fast talking. Unfortunately, the, the movie that he was in was not that cool. No. It wasn't that good and it wasn't that memorable. But if you're collecting Doctor Who, really, it's worth owning. Not my favorite, but uh, Doctor Who the movie, Special Edition, is my favorite of his because it's, I actually get to see him as a doctor in this one, and it's, he's, he does a good job. He wears the wig well. <clears throat> he wears a very like long-haired Victorian wig, and if you know Paul McGann, he usually has like short, cropped hair. Uh, great actor uh, in the role, and... Uh, I guess we should probably give a shout out to the forgotten uh, eighth doctor or seventh doctor, if you want to call. Oh, it. are we talking about the um, the the, uh, the cartoon? Oh, the rings of Sh scream of Shalka. The scream of Shalka. Yeah. Uh, Richard E. Grant. Uh, Richard E. Grant recently came back in the series as the higher intelligence. And uh, great intelligence. Great intelligence. Great intelligence. Yeah, great intelligence. Oh, God. Sure. It's late. Yeah. Uh, by the as GI, the Greater Intelligence, Probably and uh, like, you know what? He originally played the Doctor in a uh, kind of like a, a web se an animated web series, Scream of Shelka. He did a great job, actually. That was Doctor. awesome. Uh, you check it out if you can. I think it's on YouTube, and I think they, I think it may actually be on DVD now. I would have liked that. I would have honestly liked that a lot. So now that, he had his companion. Yeah. Was a robot replica of the master which I think I just spoil, spoiler alert for that one because you don't find out he's a robot until after but it was so cool just the late on the spot the master. <laughs> whoopsie uh, I mean his companion's the master ooh what's that going on about no oh. it, it was really cool like he, and it's completely out of the blue from the start of the web series, you can tell something's happened with the with Gallifrey. They don't want him there anymore. The Masters with him for some reason. Hell, even though you do, it's I intriguing. just spoiled the the whole robot thing. You don't know why he's there. It's intriguing. It is so cool. I wish it went on further. Which I think it might. The Masters. Be. But anyway, this is the uh, Ninth Doctor Palm again. Uh, we've already did our favorite story. Unless you got a different favorite story, do you? Oh, yeah, the movie. I think the movie was my favorite. <laughs> okay, well then. Thumbs up for the movie, thumbs up for McGann. Uh, sadly, it didn't go on. Well, actually, I'm kind of glad it didn't go on to a series because we wouldn't have got series that yeah. we got today. Um, it actually pretty much stalled and stopped the doctor right there. Thankfully, Spielberg didn't make his movie. Thankfully, this movie came out instead because I don't think we'd have the Doctor Who series that we have now if we'd done that. No. Next up is... Uh, a leather coat clad doctor. Yeah. It's would only play it for one season, but uh, he would be brilliant. Uh, through it all, in the end, this doctor would be brilliant. Thanks, guys. It's uh, time for tea. I don't have to.